So, who all in the room knows what a blend shape is already? Okay. So we have a couple people who are starting from scratch, so I'll, like, explain them. Um, a blend shape is a type of deformer, and a deformer in Maya, like, anything that's not physically moving around vertices by hand that makes a mesh move is a deformer. Like a skin cluster with skinned joints is technically a skin cluster deformer, but there's different mathematical ways you can move meshes around, like there's a lattice, or there's like a wire deformer, um, and there's just like, you use different deformers to accomplish different kinds of deformations. A blend shape deformer takes a mesh and it takes a target that has the same topology and it calculates the distance but that like the difference between those two meshes for each vertice um, and it'll gradually move the first mesh into the position of the target and you get like a slider that you can control. So it's really good if you were to say like, I want to raise an eyebrow. So I have an eyebrow and a raised eyebrow and I can get all the transition between that. It's also interesting if you want to like make your model do something crazy that wouldn't normally be able to be accomplished by your rig. Like say, I don't know, there's a really good example on Antonio's film where his onion man is wearing a hat and the hat gets filled up with gas fumes and like becomes blown up like a balloon. And to actually make that with skinned joints would be really obnoxious. Um, it would be way easier to just sculpt it, right? So all you have to do is sculpt out the shape that you want and create a blend shape to transition between your base mesh and the new mesh. So what I've got here is what we're going to use as our base mesh. Um, and this is just a um, target that we made out of one of the, what are they called? One of the, the expression facial scans that I've, I've edited a bit, so it's not as true to life as it once was, but uh, it'll be a good example. One of the first things you have to know when you're making blend shapes is blend shapes will not work if the meshes have different point order. In Maya, every vertex when you make it is given an assigned number. You can actually see it in the script editor. Um, when you select a vertex, it says selected vertex 589, right? All of them have labels that are used internally for like deformer operations like this. Um, and when you use certain operators on a mesh, like if you were to split it, uh, do like a mesh combine, mesh separate, or just reorder them in general, it changes that order, it reorders them. And so if you've done too many crazy operations on your sculpted mesh, you might end up with different vertex order from your original to your sculpt. And that'll like give you a crazy deformation. Uh, I actually, purposely reordered all the verts on an alt version of this mesh, so I will show you what it looks like. To create a blend shape, um, there's multiple ways to do it, but the easiest way is just to select your target, then select your base, then go to deform blend shape, and it will give you in the model's history a little slider here, but when I play with this, what's going to happen is it's going to go insane. And that is because the vertex order on these differs radically. If we were to look in the script editor, um, if I selected the vert on the tip of the nose here, it's number one. And then it's 325 on the other mesh. So obviously Maya's like, oh, okay. I'll find vertex one, which is probably up here and calculate the difference. And so it just sends your mesh on a crazy journey. Um, I'll delete that blend shape. And I will show you what it looks like on an actual working mesh. You select your target, select your base, deform, blend shape, and what you get is this little slider where it'll convert into that other mesh. Now, this only works because the way I made this mesh basically started with this mesh and then I deformed it. Another nice thing about blend shapes is that they are actually, you can paint them like skin weights. So say I have this blend shape here. I've, I like the way it deforms in the mouth, but I don't like the eyes so much. What I can do is put it into the pose and I'm just gonna hide this for now. 
um, go to paint. I'm right clicking and holding paint, blend shape, paint target weights. And you get a menu over here where you have a paintbrush just like when you're painting skin weights. This is something Professor Steele taught me. I didn't actually know this for a long time. And you can paint away that influence. So now we are like just getting the mouth deformation and not any of the eyeball deformation. So now when I go and operate the slider, it's only affecting the area that I've painted on. Um, oh yeah, there's another way you can break your blend shapes that looks quite fun. Um, for that, we're going to use my favorite blend shape editor that's actually pretty new. Uh, I think it just came in in Maya 2017. It is called the Shape Editor. You can find it in Windows, Animation Editors, Shape Editor. Um, and it'll give you a list of like all active blend shapes that you have in the scene. And it's like also another way you can use your sliders. It's actually much easier and you can set keyframes really easily too. There was another plugin called the Shapes plugin by Brave Rabbit that was an external plugin that did this and it was so good that Maya basically copied them. Um, but with this slider, you actually have the ability to go beyond just zero and one if you type in. So if I wanted to say double the vertex transformation here, set it to two, you can get it like looking real crazy real fast. Uh, yeah. And it's just, because it's underlying math, it's just calculating distances. It just starts multiplying those distances. So Maya's working exactly as intended. It just visually looks strange. Um, so how would we adapt this to like a practical rig? Like how do I control this without having to go into a billion menus? Uh, for that, we're going to need to use uh, a controller, and there's a lot of methods that you can connect your blend shapes to your controllers. Um, I'm going to today show you guys how to do a direct connection and how to do a set-driven key connection in two different like situations. So I'm just going to make a NURB circle controller that's going to sit next to our head, and it's going to have our attributes on it that we're going to use to control our head. I'll freeze its transformations, even though it doesn't really matter. I'm going to lock and hide everything here, so all we see is the attributes that are controlling our blend shapes. And I'll just call this, like, blend shape control. Delete its history. Now we have a nice clean control, and we can add an attribute. Um, we're going to be adding a float attribute because the slider that controls the blend shape is also a float attribute, and we want it to match. Since for this one we're going to make a direct connection, the numbers we have in this attribute will directly feed into the value of the blend shape. And so if we want our blend shape to be between 0 and 1, we also need our attribute to have values between 0 and 1. So I'll call this um, like test blend. Um, make sure it's a data type float. If we had it as an integer, we would only be able to set it to zero and one and none of the in-between values, which is not what we want. That would just be like an on-off switch. The beauty of blend shapes is that you can get that transition and it's really friendly to animation. Um, so we will set our minimum to zero, our maximum to one, and our default, we want it to be off by default, so we'll keep the default at zero. Now we have this attribute that currently doesn't do anything, but it goes between 0 and 1. So I am going to open up the connection editor, edit connection editor, and on the left we're going to have our control. Um, the way the connection editor works is the object on the left it is the value that you set, the value that you control, and it feeds that value directly into the attribute of the value on the right. So on the right, we need to grab our blend shape node, which you can do by clicking on the mesh, going into the inputs and clicking on the blend shape and reload right. And you'll get the blend shape node here. Uh, the value that we want to control is this weight value. Um, because under a single blend shape node, you can actually have multiple targets. You have to open up weight and find the name of the blend shape you actually want. 
So I will click on test blend, which is our attribute, and click on smile blend weight. And this will turn yellow, which will tell you that that is directly connected. And now when we come and pull on our attribute here, we can turn it on and off. You'll also notice if we go into the shape editor, um, you will see that it has a connection. This yellow part in the value is the same as seeing the yellow in the channel box. It means that there is a connection and it will move when we use the attribute. Uh, so this is like, if you had a controller where it was like a cheek puff or something on a rig, right? This is usually how that is set up, where there's an attribute that is directly controlling one blend shape, and you just toggle it on and off as you, will, as you want. But you've seen facial rigs, right, where it's like you pull up and down on a controller, not using a slider, and it'll activate a blend shape, right? Sometimes that even looks practically seamless. You don't even know it's a blend shape because it's so well incorporated into the rig. That's what I'm going to show you guys next. Uh, and that'll be using a set driven key connection. It's also like a good opportunity to show you guys some of the ways um, you can combine blend shapes using the shape editor really easily. Uh, and you can mirror blend shapes really easily as well. For that purpose, I am going to use an alt version of this mesh that I made. Um, which is symmetrical because when you are mirroring blend shapes you want a really symmetrical mesh. You kind of just want a symmetrical mesh for rigging in general but like especially because it's using the topology to create mirrored deformations so the symmetry is important. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into the shape editor and show you guys the other way to make a blend shape. Um, yeah, I always go searching for it. Since this is a new mesh, we need to make a new base blend shape node. And in the shape editor, you do that by clicking on your mesh and clicking create blend shape. This gives us a new base node, which we're going to build our targets underneath. And I'll just call this browse. To make a target in the shape editor, we don't actually need to like duplicate off this mesh and go and sculpt on it and connect it back. The thing the shape editor allows you to do is edit the deltas directly. Like you can edit your mesh and it will save out that data and you don't even have to think about making all the duplicates or crazy stuff like that. That's part of the reason why it's so nice. So to make our target, what we're going to do is click on our blend shape node that we're making the target under and click add target. What that'll do is give you a uh, new target node here and it will light this up in red and it says edit, right? That means you can sculpt on your mesh without fear. You do not want to sculpt on your mesh with edit turned off. That will be making permanent changes to your mesh. You don't want to do that. So if you're going to sculpt, turn edit on, and then you are just giving that data to the shape editor and not permanently changing the shape of your mesh. So this will be like, I'll do like a brow down because I think that'll be a really good like indication of what's actually going on with a lot of eyebrow rigs, depending on how complex they are. Uh, I'm just going to roughly move verts around. Sometimes you get a cycle check when you do this, but it hasn't actually ever given me any problems. So I think it's just Maya freaking out and being buggy as usual. Yeah. The other thing, if you want to avoid that cycle check, um, this tool set works great with the Maya sculpting tools as well. And I'm a big proponent, if you're trying to make artistic sculpts on your mesh, the Maya sculpting tools are actually really good and they're kind of slept on. Um, so it also never gives me that cycle check error, which is nice. I'm just using the pull tool here to pull verts around and you can size up your brush by dragging with the middle mouse uh, and just pull like you would normally with a big soft select vertex brush until I get something that I'm relatively satisfied with. That's pretty good. And I'll maybe just go through and smooth it out a little with the, um, the smooth brush as well. Yeah. That's obviously different enough from the other side that it looks like a new shape. When I turn edit off, 
I now have this slider that can give me that shape. And you can probably see even as animators how useful that would be if you needed to sculpt like a corrective shape. You can just open this up, make a new blend shape, and like make a new target, sculpt it how you want. And you can just key it on and off when you need it. Super useful. I'll do a, like a proper demo of how you would do that in an animated scene later. Um, so we have one eyebrow. We want the exact eyebrow perfectly on the other side, right? I'm just, I'm gonna call this left brow. Um, the shape editor makes this so easy. Right click, duplicate target. Now you'll get the same blend shape twice on the same side, which will get you that double deformation like we saw earlier, but worry not. I'm gonna rename this right brow. Right click, flip target. Look at that. They're pretty much the same. And they get you basically the same deformation. I think this mesh has a little bit of wonkiness to its topology, so they are slightly different, but it is okay. Beautiful. I love when it is easy to mirror things, because anybody who has painted skin weights knows that mirroring is not always as seamless as it should be. <laughs> um, but what if I'm working with both these brows at the same time, and I like how they look individually, but when they're together, I'd like to get some of that, like, crinkle happening in the middle, right? Where it'll come down, and this only happens when both of the brows are squinting like this. You can make a special target that only works when both of these blend shapes are active called a combination target. This is also really useful if you're doing something like making the corners of a mouth, and say you have, you have one blend shape that makes the mouth go into a smile, and one blend shape that makes the mouth go like narrow or wide. Sometimes these don't combine naturally when you're actually putting them into practice, and so combination targets are great for you to get like an actual art-directed sculpt in those situations. So I'm going to right click on both of these and add a combination target. And what this will do is it'll put me into edit mode again and I can just go and sculpt to my heart's content. I'm gonna go in and use the relax tool. That actually did the opposite of what I want. I'm not gonna use the relax tool. I'm going to pull these verts around using the pull tool again. It's a little ugly, but you get the point. It is a demo. Sometimes in the industry, you get a uh, your modeler to actually do these sculpts for you, but as a rigger, it is pretty good to know how to get your mesh looking decent because it's part of making good deformations. All right, so I will say that's good. And now, when I pull one of these blend shapes, um, back to its zero position, you can see not only is its uh, value lowering, but the value of the combination target lowers as well. And that gets you like a pretty nice deformation where it actually looks like that flesh is following along. And if you do both of these at the same time, you can see the combination target will combine with them. Really nice, super useful. Okay, so, um, how do I make a controller for these? I am going to make NURB circles that are going to be my eyebrow controllers. I'm just gonna roughly put these in. They can really be in any position for a blend shape controller. It depends on how you want your animators using the controls on the face, the orientations, like whatever you think would be easiest. Some people really like to do mirrored orientations. And I think it's, like, mirroring is really useful, so I try to do it. For this demo, though, I'm probably going to just stick with keeping both my controls in world space. So I will just roughly shape this to, like, a vaguely eyebrow shape. Yeah. Perfect. I've had to make a lot of eyebrow controllers in my time, and so I've gotten pretty good at, like, getting an eyebrow shape in very little time. And I will just put that right about where the brow is, shrink it a little bit, 
and freeze its transformations, delete its history, the works. And I'll name this left brow control. And then to get the other side, the easiest way to get um, like a mirrored control shape is to duplicate it, control G group it. Uh, oh, I, my grouping settings are off. Um, make sure when you group, you set the group pivot to the origin. That'll give you uh, a new node on top of this that's at the origin, and then you scale X negative one, and you get essentially a control that is perfectly mirrored. Then you can just take it out and freeze its transformations. Delete its history and the like, uh, and delete that group. So now I have my left brow control and I have my right brow control. And I am going to use driven keys this time to connect my blend shapes rather than um, direct connections. Because if we want to be able to move these around on the face, if you only had values of between zero and one, like the problem is when I move this like up one in Y, that's insane. If I move it down one in Y, it's like on the cheek. That just wouldn't work. We wanna be able to move the control and have it seem like the geometry is actually moving the same distance. So the set driven key editor is under the animation menu set. I don't know why it's not under the rigging menu set. Animators never use it. Um, but it is under key, set driven key, set. And our driver in this situation is going to be, I'll do the left brow first uh, and be more detailed and then just quickly do the right brow to show you the setup. Uh, in this case, the driver, the driver is the controller object, right? It is like, Think about cars, the driver's the driver of the car and the car is driven, right? So the person is controlling the car. In this case, our driver is our brow control and our driven is that blend shape node again. Um, we have to go find it in the history of the model. It is named browse and we can load driven. Occasionally when you are putting set driven keys on blend shapes, I've noticed that I'll click on it and it will freeze Maya for a little bit, but it will always unfreeze. I don't know if it's going to happen. I just want to warn y'all in advance. Yeah, it'll give you an error too. That's just Maya being weird. So we want to control left brow using the translate Y of left brow control. So since this is the neutral value and both of these are at where I want them for the neutral value, I will press key with both of these selected. Then, I will go into the left brow control and I will move it down in Y as much as I think would be appropriate for the blend shape. Probably about there. And then you can go and just slide that blend shape on in the shape editor or you can go to the, um, the blend shape node and toggle it there. Either way works. And key. And now that you have two keys, when you move this up and down, it activates that slider. The other thing you want to do when you're making a set driven key is by default, um, it is a literal keyframe. Uh, you can go and find it in the graph editor or the graph editor. By default, everybody has like a certain type of animation tangent for their keyframes and usually it's auto tangents, right? With like spline easing. You don't actually want that when you're making driven keys because you want to have a linear relationship. Because if you have that spline relationship uh, and then the animator goes and keys it again, you get a double spline basically. Um, so we just want to make that linear. So I'm going to go into the graph editor and show you how to make it linear. Um, windows. Oh, I actually keep my graph editor down here because when I'm animating, I think it's convenient. Um, you will always find the key on the node that is the driven. So I have to go and click on the mesh and it'll come up. You can see that we have spline tangents here. We do not want that. We want linear. And so now this will be a basic linear relationship controlling that blend shape. You can always also like put limits on the translation of your face controls so that it doesn't like go beyond the scope of your set driven key. The other thing you can do, which I think is fun, but doesn't really work in this situation, 
is you can um, change your tangents to spline and then set pre-infinity and post-infinity to linear. And what that will do is, uh, you knew how I like overdrove the blend shapes before. Uh, we're basically telling that set driven key relationship to continue past the values of one and zero for the blend shape. So if you want, you can keep going and keep going. <laughs> Sometimes that's practical. In this situation, well, it actually doesn't look terrible. I am surprised by that. I think I might actually keep that. Sometimes it works out. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to just really quickly go through it on the right brow as well so we can have both of our face controls. Need it as the driver. The driven is going to be our brow blend shape node right brow this time, translate Y, so key. And then what value did I set the um, point, negative point three two was the Y value I set on the other control, so I'm gonna do the same one. And then I will go and turn the blend shape on key, that'll give us another um, blend shape relationship here. What I will do is just go set this exactly the same as I did on the other side. Linear spline tangents, pre-infinity linear, post-infinity linear. And so now, when we are using these controllers, you can see we get that combination target. We also get the combination target being overdriven by our crazy tangents. Um, and we can also use these individually as well. Basically, a lot of face rigs, you can do a fully joint based face rig, you can do a fully blend shape based face rig. Most people do a hybrid, but like the good majority of facial rigs have at least some element that is just straight up doing this on every part of the face, making controllers, making blend shapes, setting driven keys on them, making combination targets so they play nicely with each other. The last thing I am going to show you is how, if you are an animator, you can make a corrective like in your shot. I have to go into my other Maya, and I have this lizard man that Laurel gave me five minutes ago. So let's say I am going to do a really great animation like I'm gonna set this key, and then I'm gonna like set this key. Wow. Glenn Keane is shaking in his boots. Um, but for some reason, his like belt here, it's not like following properly, right? That's weird. I don't want it to look like that at that frame. I want his belt to be closer to his body. And so for this shot, I'm going to do a uh, per shot corrective blend shape, basically. I'm gonna hide NURBS curve so it's easier to see and sculpt. I'll go into the shape editor and get to work. Yeah, currently the only blend shapes this guy has on him, you can see because the shape editor shows you all the blend shapes in the scene, he's got a blink. Um, I'm surprised he, he has like both his eyes blinking in the same blend shape. That's kind of a weird way to rig. But, um, who am I to judge? Uh, he has no blend shapes currently on this strap that he has. So what I'm going to do is create a node for that. And I am going to call this uh, strap underscore correctives. And we will add a target. I'll call this, oh, <laughs> his, um, it's also typoed like troso. Um, I'm gonna just call this, like, torso underscore fix underscore 01. Because inevitably, when you get really into this, it makes you into a super perfectionist, right? And so you inevitably have, like, 50 or so of these per shot correctives in every shot you do because you want it to look really nice. And the effect is great. Um, it's just a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is, now that I have this edit function on, I'm going to uh, grab the verts that I want to move around and just move them. 
it's kind of the way you wish animation would be, right? Where you can just sculpt things into different things without any limits. This is a lot of what they would do on like Hotel Transylvania when they had to do weird poses. Um, they used a lot of deformers, but they also definitely were like sculpting blend shapes for every shot. Grab it from the back. Yeah. For demo purposes, I think that works. So let's say we're done with that. And you can see this is our new per shot corrective, and this is what it looked like originally. But the problem is, now that we've sculpted that, when he goes back into his neutral position, his strap is like inside of his body. We can't have that. So what we do is we have to go to the position where he's got like the corrective that we want and key that. And the shape editor is nice in that it lets you key in the shape editor, right? And then we can go back to where he didn't need it, turn it off, and set another keyframe. And so now, you can have it sticking to him. And you can go in and adjust the easing of that in the graph editor just as you would anything. If my graph editor wants to let me use it. You will have to go and click on the mesh that you're using. Yeah, see, maybe I, because this starts to clip a little bit, maybe I want this tangent to be more intense. Yeah, works for me. Look at that, and then it goes into the position that we want. And this is pretty useful for things like, if you have a, um, like a shoulder that you start to lift it and it looks great till you get to a certain position and it looks terrible, and your rigger hasn't actually built like regular corrective blend shapes into the rig, you can go and work on little fixes. I use this all the time. I think it's super fun and gives you a lot more like creative freedom when working with your meshes. Okay, that's everything I had to demo. Does anyone have any questions? So say you were to have an eyeball and you wanted the eyelid to go from like closed to open, mm -hmm. but with like, if you only have one target for the, um, with the eyelid, would it just kind of clip through the eye? And if so, how would you make it so kind of curved around the eye? That's actually a great question. Um, Cause there's another blend shape application that I didn't show that uh, does exactly what you want. So there is a concept called an in-between target that basically the shape editor will set it up so that normally you have a blend shape that has a linear relationship between like uh, the base shape and the target shape. But if you want, you can put in an in-between blend shape between that so it has to go to the in-between before hitting the final shape. So I will actually make like a very quick eyeball here and do your exact question. So let's say this is my really ugly eyeball that I'm making in five seconds. That works, you get the picture. Um, yeah, I'll pull this up just a bit so that we'll probably get that situation you're talking about where if I make a linear relationship, it's going to clip. It's already clipping on the bottom. Let me open up the shape editor. And I will add a new target to browse that I'm going to call blink. And I'm going to grab just these vertices. This isn't going to be like the most meticulously sculpted blend shape of all time, just for, cause it's for demo purposes, but. Um, something like this. and I will smooth it out just a hair with the relax tool. Let 
maybe a bit with the smooth tool. Nah, it's gonna freak my normals out. That's good enough, right? Yeah, so we'll call this our blink shape, and it's not a huge deal, um, but you can see it's just going straight to that position, right? When normally our eyelid would probably, it rotates around the eyeball, so it would be a little bit more out before it goes down. So let's say that I want the eyelid at this position to be way more out than it currently is. So I'll say, I'll make an in-between target. I will right click, add in-between target to this area. And you can see that it gives us the uh, point in the like blend shape slider in that float value where the in-between target comes into play. It lets you choose the interpolation and it throws that edit uh, button on so that you can go and edit your mesh again. And for demo purposes, I'm going to really exaggerate this so you can see it. Um, so it's not going to look great, but you are going to see it. Yeah. That'll do. So now, when I use my slider here, first it goes out, then it goes down. Now if you put a little bit more effort into making that nice and subtle, you can get a really cool effect on your blend shapes. You can also change the interpolation, like if I wanted it to be more spliny. Yeah, and there's all sorts of stuff that uh, you can apply this to. Like I had a version of the brows where I had him, uh, I put an in-between target where they went up a little bit before they went down. Um, which would give you like an automatic anticipation. Not super practical, but looks cool when you use the slider. Does that answer your question? Awesome. We got any other questions? Yeah. Uh, say you want like the eyebrows to have multiple expressions, like for scared or angry and all that. Could you have like a base target or like a base mesh kind of go into multiple different expressions? Yeah. Um, that's sort of like what I was talking about with the uh, the like cheek corners where you'd have to, you can do a smile and a wide at the same time and you get a wide smile. Sometimes, depending on how you sculpt them, the blend shapes will combine naturally and you'll get a good expression by default. Sometimes it'll like get weird and crunchy and not look the way you want it. So that's the point where if you want scared, angry at the same time, and the, they're not like direct opposites, you put a combination target for when you've hit scared and angry at the same time with the controls, and you sculpt it the way you want it. Okay. Got any other questions? Okay, thank you guys for coming out. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you in the winter.